Well, hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Running the Gauntlet. Today, we are progressing through the gauntlets that are found within Phase 2 of the Curse of the Vampire Gauntlets. And this one is pretty interesting, and I actually found it quite enjoyable despite its difficulties. This is, of course, the level 60 Sinister Sickness Gauntlet. And it's unlike any of the other gauntlets that we've reviewed so far, because it's the first one that we've seen that has a playable hero limit. It confines you to four very specific heroes, and as the title indicates, with uh, Dream Goblin being the main antagonist, it is a selection of Spider-Verse-themed heroes, which is, of course, Spider-Man, Spider-Gwen, Miles Morales, and Venom. Now, this team is not particularly known for being my overall favorite, but they do have their benefits and synergize together. So the first leg of this gauntlet is a pretty straightforward one. It involves a fight against Dr. Octopus, but it has 60 seconds on the clock, which you can increase the time allotted to by continuing to take out opponents throughout this portion of the raft. And the fight actually takes place in the same room that you would have the confrontation against Electro and Venom in. So as we keep moving through here, it's pretty straightforward in terms of the actual fight itself. I'm struggling a little bit with the laser grid here and with some of the opponents that are throwing flame balls at me, which is less than desired. But as soon as we get through that, it's uh, pretty standard. The laser grid puzzles are exactly the same as they are in the standard quest. Uh, do take a brief moment to knock these guys out and add a little bit more time to our timer. Uh, but all things considered, you're going to have plenty of time to increase the time in your counter in this next room past the laser grids because it's the cafeteria area, which has a very high selection of opponents in there. And just like that, we're through the last of the laser grids and into the cafeteria area. Now, this section is important to remember because it's actually the setting for the second leg of the gauntlet, which we'll get to in just a little bit. But other than that, the fight's pretty straightforward. No other things that you need to keep in mind. There's no cursed enemies that crop in that you need to be wary of. It's just with the unique confinement of having these four heroes at your disposal. You'll also notice that for every hero on the team, I am running my favorite variant of their alternate costumes which has been a lot of fun to peruse through. And as soon as I have them all unlocked, of course, we'll be running through a ranking of, or a tier list of what those uh, outfits are and how they rank. Moving through into the next section, we have the little laser grid area. This one's pretty easy, or this little uh, chamber room puzzle is pretty easy. You just want to make sure that you take on the fight by or move through this pattern by closing off this one room and then you can keep moving into the next and free up the rest of your team into the final segment. Moving right along there's a couple of extra areas where you have some more opponents that you can take on. This is of course a non-mandatory combat segment. It does tend to help a little bit when it comes to uh, taking out enemies and adding the time to your counter but it's not essential in terms of finishing out this mission. So do keep that in mind. One final move through this area and we're on into the next. You can see that my health for Spider-Man is currently suffering a little bit and it's mainly because he is one of the more underleveled members of my team. I don't think that Spider-Man is overall one of the best characters to use, but he certainly has his uses and is a little fun to use. So given that Spider-Man is suffering a little bit on the health front, I do make the executive decision to just rush through there as we have over a minute left on our timer and we just want to get into the Dr. Octopus fight at this point. Which all you've got to do in this final room is take him down. And with the synergy attacks that we are unleashing, we're honestly having a pretty fun time with that. Now, as we're finishing out this fight against Dr. Octopus, it's fairly straightforward. So the first clear condition that we are looking to benefit from is clearing the gauntlet out once, because that is going to get us the first set of clear rewards. And this one, it does have five legs to it, but it's, again, fairly straightforward, and we'll just want to have a look at 
uh, some more specifics a little bit later as we go through some of the other rooms. We've got Dr. Octopus down to the last little bit of his health and detonate a couple of our extreme attacks to gain a little bit of health back in this section. Probably would have been best to hold on to those into the second leg, but our meter does recharge fairly easy. The second phase of the gauntlet is a section where we need to defeat 40 enemies. We do have one mini boss that shows up a little bit later into the fight, uh, but we just need to defeat 40 of them. And keep in mind that damage increases every minute over the three minutes that we are in this fight. So the first minute's pretty standard, but once you get into that last and final minute, things can get a little bit hairy if you're not careful. Venom, I think, is one of the best characters for this gauntlet in particular because he has large area of effect type attacks, though he is primarily a melee brawler with the exception of one of his abilities, which I don't really use all that often. Uh, but he does very well in taking out some of the heavier opponents as well as working through the different objectives here. As we make our way to about 30 enemies defeated or so, we're going to have the mini boss show up and that is going to be Electro. And Electro is pretty straightforward. He's uh, about as strong as he is when you first encounter him and he is one of the weaker bosses. Uh, or mini boss characters that are made available throughout this this quest so uh, really not that bad when it comes to taking him out as you can see venom is tearing through his health and with one synergy attack there we have completely decimated him we're going to unleash a couple of extreme attacks here you see that we've got all four of them ongoing that's going to help us not only clear out this challenge but also get some of our health back and that's important to keep in mind because the second criteria for clearing this gauntlet is getting or using your EX attacks 20 times, uh, which means that over the course of the five legs, if you unleash the extreme attacks once for each character, you can clear out that condition within the first run through that gauntlet. The third leg is a fairly straightforward fight against Sandman. He does have a couple of different enemies that come to aid him in that fight as you're taking him on, but other than that, it's fairly straightforward, and you've got to use your concrete suppression cannons to take him on, and then hone in on him and use whatever attacks that you can to continue melting away at his health. I found it best to hold on to any extreme attacks that you may have until the second wave of the attack, or to use this area to really build up on those extreme attacks to unleash them all at once on that second portion of the gauntlet. So as we continue working our way through here, you'll notice that one of the enemies that comes in is one of the elementally charged unknown, uh, or maybe one of the en energy themed unknown. And he's not too terribly difficult, though he does absorb hits from the concrete suppression cannons as you look to run those. But with Sandman incapacitated here again, we're going to unleash all of our extreme attacks right up here close and personal to him. And that is going to rip through the remainder of his health with the exception of that last little sliver there. And one final ex ability attack is going to be more than enough to take out what's remaining of his health there and move us into phase four of the gauntlet, which in my opinion is the most difficult of the four different legs that are done and the reason being is i don't particularly like mysterio as a general rule as a as a boss character because he has two abilities that are really problematic first is he sends out some of these clouds that slow your standard movement but he will also spew out some of that green ooze that is customary of the aim soldiers that damage and sta damages you and staggers you out if you happen to get caught in it he even has one attack where he unleashes some of that slowing field of effect usage and then comes down from the heavens and unleashes yet another cloud of that green. So your movement speed is affected as well as your overall ability to get in close and damage him. So I do prioritize to using some more ranged attacks where I can. Venom's heavy attack does quite well at that when it comes to avoiding the green mist area. Once you've taken out one Mysterio, you will then be confronted by two Mysterios. And they both, all of them will do the exact same thing when they first come in. They have this large vortex attack that they do, 
And the difference is you do see that attack used within the first leg of the gauntlet, but he has some shadow projections that make it a little bit more difficult to find him. Here, you just have two fully-fledged Mysterios that are going to, well, ruin your day, uh, to put it plainly. And you'll see here that they do tend to team up. They use a combination of their slowing mist attacks as well as their green damage aura attacks as well. One of them's pretty close to going down, and upon taking him out, uh, you're just left with dealing with the second of the two Mysterios. And as soon as you've done so, which should be within a fairly short time frame here of using a few more of our standard and ability attacks, right like that. But as soon as you have two Mysterios taken out, you will then be confronted by three Mysterios. And they start out the fight the exact same way that the others before them did with this large Cyclone attack going on. And I find it beneficial to just keep away from that as it's being unleashed. We use a couple of our extreme ability attacks to whittle down most of them as best we can and avoid a lot of that green cloud action that they have going on which is really very annoying because it just doesn't allow for any room and error. And so working your way through it can be a little bit of a challenge and a hassle. But the fight does get more manageable the more Mysterios you take out because it frees up more space, and they do tend to clutter together a little bit as well, which can be mildly infuriating, especially where you're being staggered out of your attacks with the green clouds that they're putting up. So I do end up trying to bait a couple of them away from each other, so we're not dealing with as many of them at the exact same time. And they will occasionally pause and use that vortex attack again, though they can choose to use that attack at different times. The general trend is that they will repeat doing that. We actually managed to take out two of them there with the use of that synergy attack between Venom and I believe it's Spider Gwen that helps out with that. So there's just the final member of this team that we need to take out, and that will allow us to progress on to the fifth and final leg of this gauntlet. So just like that, we've punched into Mysterio a little bit more, uh, but there's still a little left in his health bar to take out. And he really does a number on us. This is not my favorite uh, portion of this gauntlet, but as soon as he's got that vortex out of the way, we should be able to uh, get him staggered out and take him down. So as he's staggered there, we lay in a couple more attacks, a few more abilities and synergies, and with one final placement of a few good attacks, we can move right along into the fifth and final gauntlet, which is difficult in its own right, but I still feel that this leg of the gauntlet is by far the worst. That being said, you regain 60% of your health or any missing health for all of your characters back after you finish through that gauntlet, so it does reward you for struggling through it. Now, the this final fight, it's basically exactly what you had seen in the main story quest. You've got to take out Dr. Octopus as well as Green Goblin, essentially the same way that you did in the main story quest with the added bonus of there being a couple of additional enemies that com come in but it's mainly to help facilitate in the fight against him as you have the same quirk in this fight as you did the previous, where you regain a time back on your timer by defeating enemies that are present. By taking out Dr. Octopus here, you will trigger into the second phase. And while we wrap this up, I'm gonna to touch on the last two criteria to get the full clear. Now, the one that we haven't talked about that I was able to obtain is defeating 80 powerful enemies. So that's 80 of those enemies that have the stagger bars, such as these aim soldiers you see wailing on here, as well as these boss characters uh, factor in or count into that criteria also, which tends to make things quite nice when it comes to finishing out uh, these types of fights and these objectives because they're around to be found and to kind of uh, assist you with finishing out those clear conditions. We've just about got Dr. Octopus finished out here, which is going to be a good opportunity to talk about the last criteria that we need in order to finish out this gauntlet, which is dealing 15 
million damage or more with abilities. And this is made a little easier because synergy attacks do count co towards the ability damage counter, but it's still quite a lot. And by the calculations that I had, you're going to want to run this gauntlet about four times completely to meet that 15 million damage cap. I would just advise making sure that you have your team at a reasonable level. Again, Spider Gwen and Spider Man were probably at about level 40 when I first ran through this. And they did okay, but in the long run, they just don't have what it takes to keep up with this fight at that low of a level. So as much as I don't really enjoy using Spider Man and Spider Gwen on my teams, as a general rule, I did end up pouring some resources into them to get them up at a little higher level, and I will be revisiting this on my own time to get that last clear condition. You do have a bunch of rewards that come along with that. They're mainly shield markers with the first three criteria that we discussed, awarding you 165 shield emblems. And the final task of that 15 million damage rewarding you with 300 shield emblems which is quite nice and again really help with collecting alternate costumes for the team members that uh, you have access to so we keep moving through this into the final attack or the final fight against green goblin and this is about as straightforward as you would expect it to be with him using his pumpkin bombs you do want to be cautious whenever he clusters his bombs a little bit closer together as they tend to be the runs where he wants to run right into your face and kind of ruin your day. But that can actually play to your benefit as well as some of these pumpkin bomb attacks uh, can be used to help hone in on him a little bit better and trigger his, uh, his stagger animation a little more readily. So we do end up using a few more of his bombs against him. You can generally spot one or two of them that will help. The difficult thing here is that you can auto-target onto some of the opponents that are summoned in to help, which can be a little bit frustrating, especially when you're really just needing to get that last little bit taken out of Green Goblin. But you do have plenty of time on the timer to get this fight taken out, especially if you defeat Dr. Oct Octopus in a timely manner. Throwing a few more of these attacks out, we end up getting Green Goblin into his second phase, which is exactly the same as it is in the main story quest. Now, one thing that people don't realize about this fight is you can pick up a bomb before he triggers the time stone and then use that to throw into him immediately thereafter and get kind of some free damage as long as there were some pumpkin bombs present to throw out. And we just managed to time him out there before that fight was finished. So detonating all of our extreme attacks is going to be enough to finish him out. And that's really all you need to know about the Sinister Sickness Gauntlet. But let me know what you think of this gauntlet in the comments down below. If there are gauntlets that you're struggling with or want some tips and tricks on as we will be covering all of the different gauntlets throughout the different DLCs as this series continues. So thanks again for watching. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already for more daily content, and we will see you tomorrow.